Hey everybody. Today we're working to understand sample variance and standard deviation. These are both ways of describing the spread or variability of a data set. In particular, each one of them measures in a certain way how far values in the data set are from the mean, on average. The formulas are pretty ugly. Here they are. Um, here n is the total size of the sample. Xi represents the values in the data set, so like x1, x2, x3, and so on. And x bar, that x with the line over it, is the sample mean. Now, typically we compute all of this using technology. For example, I use R. Um, however, that doesn't excuse us from actually understanding these concepts. If anything, the fact that we're not doing these things by hand anymore really makes it more important that we understand the concepts. So let's go through these formulas a little bit, see what they mean, and understand why they make sense. Um, the key to each one is this quantity xi minus x bar. This represents the deviation of each x value, xi, from the sample mean. In other words, the amount by which it's above average or below average. Fundamentally, we'd like to take the average of that. We'd like to see how um, each value deviates from the mean if it's big, if it's small, and then take the average of that. Unfortunately, if we try and do that, we always end up getting zero. xi minus x bar has an average value of zero over all the xi's. And the reason is simple. The mean, x bar, is the center of the data set. So the positive um, deviations always exactly balance out the negative ones. So the problem with just taking the average there is that we're allowing a below average xi to, in a sense, reduce our measure of variability, when varying from the mean by a lot in the negative direction is just as bad as varying from the mean by a lot in a positive direction. So the way we're going to get around that, the way we're going to count all of our deviations as positive, is going to be to square all of these xi minus x bars before we actually take an average. And this gives us our formula for sample variance. We take the xi minus x bar and square it for each one of the xi's in the data set, and then take the average of all of those. So variance is, in a sense, representing an average of the squared deviations of all the values in a data set from the mean of that set. Now, right away, you probably noticed that we weren't exactly taking an average, because we didn't divide by n. The number of values in the data set, but instead divided by n minus 1, one fewer than the number of the values in the data set. So why do we do that? There are several different reasons um, that we could point to. Here's, I think, the best one at the um, stats 101 level. When we compute x bar, or once we've computed x bar, we actually only need n minus 1 of the xi's to compute the variance, the sample variance up above. And the reason is that the mean x bar can be used to figure out the remaining xi, simply because x bar is equal to the sum of all the xi over n. And we could solve that for any of the xi that we like. For example, we could solve it for xn by moving x1, x2, etc. over to the left-hand side there. So really, when we compute that sample variance um, using that formula at the top, we are only computing an average of n minus 1 distinct deviations, not n of them. We get the nth, in a sense, for free. Um, one more problem that we should point out. Since we've squared all the individual deviations from the mean, variance doesn't end up being on the same scale as our original data, which means that the number that we get in the end is rather abstract. Ideally, we'd like to have a number at the end that we can interpret we'd like it to be on the same scale as our data. So we deal with that, we, we handle that by taking a square root of that sample variance. And this gives us the formula for what we call the sample standard deviation. It's a little more complicated, it's a little more work to compute, um, and it's theoretically more difficult to work with if you go on in statistics. However, it's a lot more easy to interpret and to visualize. Bottom line, we kind of need both standard deviation and variance in different, um, different circumstances. A quick example. Here's a data set with just four values. Let's compute the, standard, the sample variance 
and standard deviation from those. In each case, we're going to need the sample mean. So we add up the four values and divide by four. We get 121. That's a measure of the center of this data set. We do the variance by doing um, the difference between each of the values in the set and that sample mean squared. We add up all of those individual squared variations and divide by three, one less than the number of values in the data set. Here we get 220. Again, notice that number doesn't really seem to have much meaning in the sense of uh, these actual values in our data set. 220 does measure the spread or variability of this set, but it's difficult to immediately interpret. When I take the square root, however, to get the standard deviation, I get 14.8. And that's a number that actually makes some sense to me as a measure of spread in this data set. Overall, I interpret these numbers to mean that the data is centered at 121 and that a typical value lies 14.8 units away from this center. Um, a quick word on technology. Using R, the commands for variance and standard deviations are, and standard deviation are var and sd. So for example, we could have done the last problem using these commands. Um, first, coding in the four values that I have in the data set as a vector, x, and then asking r to do the mean, variance, and standard deviation. A lot less work to do this using technology. Um, my strong belief is that you should not be computing variance and standard deviation by hand in this day and age. Um, I personally, as a professor, do not ask my students to do this. Now, in nearly every case, the majority of the values in a data set will lie within one standard deviation of the mean, typically about two thirds, although that can vary pretty widely. Here's a simple example. Here I've drawn 200 values at random from the integers between zero and 100. So each one having an equal probability of getting chosen. Here, the mean of this data set is 49.9, um, and the standard deviation is 27.3. So if I go one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below, I'm gonna capture 15 of the 20 values and leave five of the values in this data set out. Now, if the distribution has a bell shape, a normal distribution, we can say even more. In that case, approximately 68% of the data will lie within one standard deviation of the mean. About 95% of the data will lie within two standard deviations of the mean, and nearly all of it, 99.7% of the data, will lie within three standard deviations of the mean. This gets known as the empirical rule, or sometimes the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. I've illustrated it here with um, uh, a smooth arc representing a, a histogram. Let's wrap up by doing one quick example using the empirical rule. Scores on a certain standardized test have an approximately bell-shaped distribution. The mean of all scores is 1060, and the standard deviation is 195. So using the empirical rule, approximately 68% of scores would fall between 865 and 1255, one standard deviation below the mean to one standard deviation above the mean. Approximately 95% of scores will fall between 670 and 1450. So there I've taken the mean, 1060, subtracted twice the standard deviation, and added twice the standard deviation. Finally, about 99.7% of scores will fall between 475 and 1645. That is, within three standard deviations of the mean. 